<laughs> this is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. And this is Mike White, and you can find me on Twitter at I am Mike White. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. And welcome to The Obsessive Viewer. We're a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show, each episode. You can find more of our work at obsessiveviewer.com, more of our podcasts at obsessiveviewer.com slash podcasts. You can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And finally, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer at the minimum rate of $1 per month for an exclusive RSS feed with content recorded specifically for Patreon supporters. Uh, Mike and I just recorded a very fun uh, conversation about our history as podcasters, and I posed an impossible question to Mike. Uh, yeah, so and he's still reeling from that dilemma I'm, of answering I'm it. I'm dazed. I'm dizzy. <laughs> yeah. uh, of course, uh, you can get access to that once again at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. So, Mike, how's it going, buddy? It's really good. I'm on I'm on summer break. Um mm-hmm. we're leaving for vacation in a little while. Uh nice. and I've just been home uh spending time with the kids, spending time with the wife and um a show that I'll talk about if we do a potpourri that we've been very Sweet. into. Working on nice. a new record with my band mm-hmm. um and playing uh some Mortal Kombat eleven. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh where are you guys going on vacation? We um we're going to Georgia. Okay. Uh some lake. Gosh, I wish I, I should know what the name of the lake is. Uh but we <laughs> we usually go to uh North Carolina or Florida and we went right. to Florida last year. It was like a 12-hour drive with stops with the kids and it was mm-hmm. so bad oh, with God. the babies. We were just like, no, we're not doing it. Yeah. So we're like find somewhere in a 6-hour radius nice. and that might even be pushing it so yeah uh, georgia and so what, a- what i love what's really cool um is so my wife and i we bring our kids and then her parents come mm-hmm. and then my mom and my brother uh and his wife and, and my niece come so we like bring the families okay. together nice it's really great yeah and wow like uh you said it's a six hour drive yeah it's like five and a half Okay. On the ground. I mean, you could you could plow through some pretty good anthology episodes. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we, my wife and I, kind of have arrangements where um, whoever has to, whoever drives, kind of gets mm-hmm. to listen to music because of the gotcha. burden of driving. Um, sure. And so I kind of I kind of <laughs> prefer that as opposed mm-hmm. to like breaking up my 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 son's arguments in the back right. seat in the passenger seat. I, th- <laughs> I, th- I thought you were going to say, as opposed to, I kind of prefer that as opposed to breaking out my marriage by listening to your podcast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, we would, we would not listen to podcasts over the, I understand my, that. my, uh, my son, Oscar would, I don't like this. <laughs> he would say, Oh yeah. <laughs> I just can't like this. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. So we've got tons of stuff to talk about oh, and man, catch up it's on. It's a list. Everything. Yeah. So exciting. Um, first of all, let's, I, I'm, I do have a list of things that I kind of want to, want us to run through before we get to the actual review. Where today we're reviewing Child's Play, uh, the 2019 remake of the, what was, when was the original? 80, uh, was 1985, 6, 88. Sure. <laughs> okay. Sorry, 1988. Yeah, it was after oh, okay. I was born. That's right. Okay, nice. Uh, 1988 uh, remake this year. Um, mm-hmm. Have you on this kind of topic? Um, have you seen the meme that's been going around of the picture of the uh, not marquee, but the the yeah the, uh, the theater yeah Bill, uh, the theater thing yeah Bill uh, sign yeah. yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> uh, it just, I don't, it, Aladdin, Child's Play, yeah. Men in Black. That's the 90s. Mm, yeah. Now, uh, me, how do you feel about that? a super a-hole. 
<laughs> oh, I know where you're going. Do you know with this. where Go I'm going with this? Yeah. Those movies didn't come out the same year, <laughs> right? <laughs> so Godzilla is the other one. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but how do you feel? Like, do you feel like that's indicative of the state of movie going and like like um, oh, okay pop culture? So these we're days, talking about or? franchises. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, absolutely. Of course. I mean, we mm-hmm. know that it, that this is what studios do now. They just they either put money into franchises or really horror movies now, and they don't even have to put money into horror movies because yeah. they're so cheaply made. Um, mm-hmm. But that's like all you get now are big franchises mm-hmm. and horror movies, and then you know um, the awards movies will kind of come out in in the awards season to kind of make yeah. their push. But other than that, man, there is there is just no room for anything else. And if they are, mm-hmm. it's, 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 you know, it's led by an all-star cast of comedians or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just the, it's the way the world works these days anyway. So it's like. It is. Like, do you, do you yeah. remember 05? Here we go. Clock, clock it. What did, what did it take mm-hmm. us? Nine minutes into the episode sure. to talk about college. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um. Do you remember the summer of 05, 40 year old mm-hmm. virgin and wedding crashers came out? And we kind of had a fun tete a tete uh, between the two of yeah. us about which movie we thought was better. Oh, Regardless, yeah. you don't get two comedies a summer like that anymore. Totally. It just doesn't happen. Oh, yeah. Although it happened um, last summer, didn't it? Uh, what were the original Blockers, last Tag. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Blockers was great. And Game Night. Okay. Well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess they make comedies. You know, but, there are always there are always um exceptions to the exceptions. rule. Exceptions. Yeah. But yeah, I think it is interesting that we got oh, a yeah. Toy Story 4 that we didn't mm-hmm. needed. Uh, Men in Black yeah. that nobody wanted. I can't believe how few people right. saw Men in Black. Like I and it's funny cuz like I haven't seen Men in Black yet. And uh, like you said, I I didn't won't. Want I it. probably won't see it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, the thing that makes me I don't have any fundamental issue against it. I, right. I, right. I'm not boycotting it or anything. I just Yeah. I, you know, it's just not going to be on your radar. It won't. High right. enough on your radar. Exactly. But the thing that's pulling me toward like seeing it eventually if I'm bored enough is uh Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. Sure. Like their chemistry like that star appeals what's going to what that would be the thing that would maybe put my ass in the seat. <laughs> right. Um, right. But it's been several weeks now, and I haven't been bothered to yeah, see it. Yeah, exactly. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, because like, I have... Because Thursday, to kind of tip our hat to when we're recording this, Thursday is the 4th of July, and I don't really have any plans for the 4th of July, and I have a list. So I was saying, like, oh, I'll go see like a matinee or something. And like I have a list of like movies that I haven't been able to see mm-hmm. that are still playing and everything. And I'm, I've been on record for... <laughs> six years now on this podcast saying that I'm a huge Pixar fan. I still haven't been bothered to see Toy Story 4. Oh, mostly, wow. Yeah. Mostly that's due to just, I don't want to be in the theater when there's a bunch of kids that are being all disruptive and everything. Cause I've had very terrible experiences. With yeah, that. that's true. But don't you feel yeah. like the best time to do that was the Friday night that it opened. Now it's all kids. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. We took I Oscar I was to kinda... see Toy Story four. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. I'm very excited to, to hear <laughs> okay. about that. Okay. Um, but like what I was getting at was that uh, Thursday I was like, okay, I can go see a movie. Um, since I have the day off work and everything and all that, so I was like, okay, well, I could finally see Toy Story four. Um, and this is part of just being fatigued by IPs essentially, like like uh franchises, but like. I was just like, you know what? I'm a, instead I'm gonna see yesterday because that's an original movie. I don't know what the like what the response has been. I think it's gotten kind of mixed reviews, yeah, but it has, I mean it's which is disappointing. yeah. But I mean it's an intriguing concept. It's a very it's an interesting uh it's an original film, and that's <laughs> something that I'll be more into. Like I the when was it um fry oh <laughs> it was uh last wednesday it was the day before my birthday i saw i went and saw um godzilla king of the monsters because right. that was just like the only thing that was like able to like time wise and everything sure 
and I was like, I it was just like it like you said when we were doing the Patreon stuff. Like I was just checking it off. Like that was just like okay, this is a movie that I am watching, have now seen, and will not think about. <laughs> so. Right. You know, that brings to mind uh, a tweet by a guy named William Bibiani. He's a, he's a LA, uh, film, uh, journalist. Uh, and so he replied, um, said film Twitter poll, baby Hitler edition, mm. which is a great name for a, a Twitter yeah. game. Uh, you can travel back in time to change one cinematic milestone, uh, oh. i.e. making sure Eric Stoltz stays cast in Back to the Future. Right, like right. trivia. What if you could yeah. do some milestones, right? Mm. What will you choose and why? And he said, George Lucas never returns to Star Wars in the 1990s. No special oh, yeah. editions, no new films, uh, and the franchise respectfully fades into the background of their popular culture and makes room for new ideas. Oh, that hits me. That's a kick in the gut because... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that's profound. I think that's profound. Yeah. And and, oh, yeah. and a couple of people reply like this. One guy was like, "But then we wouldn't get the Last Jedi, which I arguably believe is worth the prequels." And and my reply to that guy is, "He's not even talking about Star Wars, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Like well, he is talking about Star Wars, but he's talking about something sure. more than Star mm-hmm. Wars. You could almost go back." To that, Mm -hmm. you could almost go back to the special editions in the 90s of this, you know, Star. I I don't mean to say that that Star Wars was some small thing that got reinvented in the 90s, but, you know, for a good 10 years, Mm -hmm. I mean, Star Wars was fading. Mm -hmm. And it became this uber commodification. Of Star Wars, um, and and you know Marvel came along, Pixar came along, Disney continued mm-hmm. just blah blah blah. So everything built, but I really think there's this, there's this Star Wars, uh, 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 zero point where it mm-hmm. kind of all began, uh, where it's just franchises and IPs, mm-hmm. and it's just the same thing. And and I can't complain too much about the state of the movie industry. I like it. Right. I, I mean, yeah. you know, Marvel is awesome. It's so much fun mm-hmm. to watch. That 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 there is an Annabelle conjuring universe. I, that's so cool to me. Um, yeah. But to to take the long way around to answer your question, uh, mm-hmm. I also do love endings to things. Yeah, and I don't like that film has now taken on this comic book style of mm-hmm. nothing is ever actually over. E- exactly. Even in even in, uh, isn't isn't that essentially said in the the Rise of Skywalker trailer? Don't that like they're never actually dead or anything like that? Yeah, like, yeah. it's like that same kind of idea. Well, but what I, I you know my theory mm-hmm. on Rise of Skywalker is Skywalker is a new term. Like you become a Skywalker, uh, okay. right? Like like, they're like Siths or Jedi. Jedi now they're a Skywalker, and so okay. that's their way to fucking reboot again, man. <laughs> yeah. And I and that's I really enjoyed the Force Awakens, and I had my mm-hmm. issues with Last Jedi, and I'm very mm-hmm. excited for Rise of Skywalker, but I could do without them. Yeah, I. And <laughs> my my complete dickhead like trolley response to the idea of like okay George Lucas never going back and doing the special editions and stuff yeah um like my dickhead response is like but that means you would only get like what two two and a half good movies yeah, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. and I don't even know yeah, I, I would just I would this. go back and George Lucas would never do Return of the Jedi <laughs> right yeah but um but no and it's interesting like that's a, such an interesting just hypothetical because. Um, what yes, are his two and a half Star Wars, American Graffiti, no. and Empire? Uh, I guess I was yeah. just saying like okay, half of half of half Return of, of the Jedi, Jedi was good, yeah. <laughs> but really I was just saying it to be a dick, right? Because <laughs> I don't care about any of them, but um, whatever. That's mostly joking, anyway. Um, but it's an, it's interesting because like like you said, that is you can kind of pinpoint that as like a watershed moment for franchise film, like that's. 
led to that has led to just this endless comic bookification of for sure film franchises and blockbuster filmmaking <laughs> but on the on the flip side of that and i don't i don't have data to support this i don't know if this is true or if this is accurate but would you say that the re-release of the special editions in theaters could could there be a, uh could a case be made that that also helped bring about these like um uh, revival like theatrical runs of movies like just last week do the right thing spike lee's oh. do the right thing was was back in theaters for its anniversary um, um or would that have happened without the special editions re-release? I, I will say maybe but okay. so that so many of those have happened kind of mm-hmm. kind of like outside the realm of sci-fi or spectacle movies that I, that I, yeah. that I don't know. I'm not going to say definitely mm-hmm. no. I'm just going to say, sure. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a, it's a we like it. There's no way to tell if it really correlates or anything, but right. I will say it's that, an interesting like, well, maybe, idea. Like yeah. what I would hypothesize is that like maybe blockbuster filmmaking brings in so much money to, the industry that they can afford to do these limited run re-releases in theaters like right. uh 2001 last year and Schindler's List last year do the right yep. thing this year and yep. all yep. that so i don't know and like AMC just announced i haven't really read up on it but they uh are calling like certain certain movies AMC artisan films where it's like for movies that are like, prestigious and like like non non blockbustery movies yeah. so let know. me let me say a thing about endings if I could go back mm-hmm. there for a second. Um two that come to mind. Um I really love uh what Endgame is able to do for the Marvel universe so mm-hmm. much in the comic book way that like it it is an ending, but I'm okay that it'll go on. Like I've right. been telling my friends uh, and and I think I talked about apologizing for spoils in the Patreon, so I'll say it again here mm-hmm. at, toward the beginning of this episode. I, I'm going to spoil Endgame, but just fast forward or or right. go see the movie. Um, sure. So uh, so I'm sorry, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Um, so at the end, when when Cap or Steve Rogers gives the shield mm-hmm. to Sam Wilson and and says mm-hmm. it's yours now. Um, to me, my ultimate scenario is that there is a Captain America four, mm-hmm. and it's Sam Wilson is Captain. America. I would love that so much. Right? That's 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 the dream for me because that's yeah. the comics, man. That's how. Mm-hmm. And so it means that End Game isn't. And apparently, Spider Man Far From Home is the end of the Infinity. Oh saga, yeah, is what Feige said. Whatever that means. Right. Um, but we do. I mean, we have no idea. There is no official movie coming next. And I, so right. I, I love that they're letting us sit for a summer mm-hmm. thinking it might be done. It won't be. I'm not an idiot. But it, it would be, might be. Yeah. And, and it would be so – and they, they would never do this in, a hundred, in like a million years. It would be cool if like Far From Home comes out and then they announce that the next movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe will come out – in summer 2021 give us the entire 2020 just to sit with everything that's happened since 20 since 2008 but now we know i'm just just for all the listeners screaming we know we're getting guardians 3 i know Mm -hmm. i know that well they've been talking about a black widow movie i know that i know Mm -hmm. that my point is that story is done and i love Mm -hmm. that Right? right, we might really never see Chris Evans in a Marvel movie right. again, and that's awesome. That's oh, yeah. so powerful. Is oh yeah. The second thing I'll say. Oh, and we're also getting the TV shows on Disney Plus. We are right. Just to uh, the that Sam Wilson and Bucky, mm-hmm. which makes me feel like that's Captain America four. Uh, I'll be interested yeah. to see how that goes. Something that makes me excited, more excited for that than I was before, and I'm I I'm very excited for it just because I I love those characters interacting and everything uh something that i'm more excited about is the knowing that they're it's going to be like a limited series like a mini series of yes, six episodes right like and not that, like a long running series me like, too. i'm, That's I'm important super to happy me. with that likewise yeah um so what were you gonna say well the other thing i'll say um is i went into toy story 4 a little frustrated like why why mm-hmm. why why 
three was so good. Um, mm-hmm. But I will say, by the end of it, it is kind of a natural progression. Is it of okay? Why nice? Yeah. Um, they like you good? remember the scene in three <laughs> where they go into the the lava pit, right? And you mm-hmm. think they're gonna die. Well, they actually die in four. So wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but there is a there is a natural progression. I, I think okay. People who have seen it kind of know what I'm talking about. Or nice. Um. um so okay, uh, that brings me into something I definitely want to want to touch on. But before we get to that, um, you are making music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So before we get too deep into the episode, can you tell us about uh, your band, as good as it gets, and the forthcoming EP and everything you're you're doing? Sure. Uh, to add an asterisk, if I may, perpetually mm-hmm. making music. <laughs> Uh, and sure. so this is kind of our next, it's kind of a th- mm-hmm. thing with Dustin and me. So I, I am mm-hmm. in as good as it gets. Uh, new listeners can check us out all over the internet. Um, we're on Spotify, anywhere. I prefer Spotify, but anywhere you listen to digital music, our, our album mm-hmm. from last year, Pastiche, is out. Uh, you can find, uh, follow me on Twitter. That's kind of the most, the best we do for updates. Um, mm-hmm. you can follow us on Instagram. We have a Facebook. Just search us. We're out there. We also, our big project for the summer was our YouTube channel. So, uh, youtube.com, yes. as good as it gets. Um, we post videos every Tuesday and Friday, live videos, us, uh, you know, sitting together playing music. Sometimes I do a song, uh, and sometimes we do kind of old songs from our, from our archives. We've been playing music mm-hmm. together for about 15 years. Yeah. And, um, so our p- kind of promise to each other, uh, my partner Dustin, is that we would just always, always make music. Uh, and so, you know, when we have an idea, we, we put it down and we send it to the other guy. Uh, and so as we were mastering, uh, our last record, Pastiche, he actually, like, you know, we were in the process of mixing and I was sending it to the masters and coming up with the track list and pictures and whatever. He goes, Hey, I, I wrote this piano thing. What do you think? And I'm like, dude, uh, give me a minute. <laughs> to put this record out into the world and then well mm-hmm. so we've actually been working on this one since since last summer um, that's awesome and it's cool i feel like maybe i should wait a little while to talk about it more okay. but i'm but i am super excited it's a little different uh it's it's there's a theme to it it's it's a nostalgia heavy record this summer i've i've lived in indiana for 20 years and so i did a lot Jeez. of looking back uh, on mm-hmm. kind of the last 20 years and that summer of 1999, you know, going from Chicago and, and moving to Indiana. So, uh, I wrote, um, almost all of the lyrics on this record, which I'm, which nice. I'm pretty excited about. So we did a new, um, a new kind of writing style this time around, which I'll talk about. We'll, we'll do an episode in August oh, totally. or, or September when the record comes out. Um, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, it, it'll, it'll be out soon. So I, I won't even kind of announce the title yet, but, uh, okay. if you, if you can kind of check us out on YouTube, I'd appreciate that a lot. Nice. And then again, that's youtube.com slash as good as it gets. Correct. Yep. Okay, sweet. So, yeah, and also from your album Pastiche, um, the track Was It Me is what is used for the outro music in the pod, all the podcasts from Obsessive Viewer Podcast. So, uh, yeah, so if you guys like that little melody that plays before the uh, pre recorded outro, check out Pastiche and check out Mike's band. It's very awesome. Nice. Um, you, like, your musical work is one of two musicians that i listen to <laughs> uh, uh the other being motion city soundtrack <laughs> yes right exactly so, yes um and i guess fallout boys included there too sure but, um yeah but and also <laughs> i tweeted this but like i uh my tweet was um like everybody like oh what kind of music are you into and then me oh you know music that is in movie trailers that isn't in the actual score of the movie because it's made specifically for marketing purposes right it's made specifically for sunshine (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) right (laughs) exactly um but yeah so anyway i i love you i've been a big admirer of your music goal abilities and everything so i'm super excited that you guys are doing this oh, so man, thank you and putting out so much uh quality uh music so good you job know, funny enough when i first introduced when we first met and mm-hmm. i introduced you to my music i was like hey i'm in a band we mm-hmm. put this out that was like oh five 
yeah. right? So it would have been 05. Mm-hmm. We had only been a band for like four years. Jeez, And we're coming up nuts. on 18 years of making music, so. God. Kind of funny. That is insane. Yeah, isn't it? Yep. Um, that's crazy. So... So, uh, yeah, so we, okay, so peek behind the curtain, we just recorded for like a year. Um, and, uh, so uh, it was a bunch of different topics and everything. So what we're doing is we're ending this recording with a potpourri segment that I'm going to put at the top of the episode. So you guys get like that movie and TV discussion that, um, you subscribe for. (laughs) So, uh, so yeah, so Mike, uh, let's go into it. Um, man, I'm now I'm freaked out about how I'm going to edit this, but that's fine. Uh-huh. So, uh, let's talk about Child's Play first, and then we'll wind down with with uh with uh swapping Pope or wind and, up, yes. right? Or wind up, yes. yes. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so Child's Play, like Mike, you are a horror guru, connoisseur, uh-huh. um, student of the genre. Yes, well, I'll say that um, student of the genre. Yes. Yeah. So. How did you feel going into this new Child's Play? What's your relationship? I know you've said that you're a fan of Child's Play, the franchise. I am very much so. Yes. Well, that I so, think is... How'd you feel? It is... Uh, you know, we can talk about the movie as long as you want, but I think what is what is most worth talking about uh, is how this movie got made. Uh, or why it got made, I guess. Um, and what I mean by that is this is a, a remake of the original. It is a franchise. So I would call it a reboot, right? They're, they're, Mm -hmm. uh, they're starting over with an IP, a franchise in order to create more sequels. So they're, they're starting over. Um, but what is crazy is that the, the original franchise is still going. Right, because they just had the a recent. Was it like kind of a direct to digital yes. movie that you were a huge fan of? I am loved I it. Correct? Yeah, yep. Okay. Cult of Chucky. So let me let mm-hmm. me explain a little more. Um, so the original create the original writer Don Mancini wrote the original film. Uh, he did not direct it. Uh, he in fact didn't direct any of the first three, but has directed all of them. Uh, since um, Seed of Chucky. Uh, John, mm-hmm. uh, uh, not, not John, Ronnie Yu directed, um, Bride of Chucky. And then Don Mancini took over the franchise, the director's chair, and directed the last three installments. So Seed of Chucky, uh, Curse of Chucky, and Cult of Chucky. And Curse of Chucky came out, uh, a couple years ago. It was also direct to, uh, video. And it was, it was kind of a soft reboot for the franchise. It, uh, when I went in, I was like, is this a sequel or, or what? Cause like, you know, he, he's kind of fresh again. Uh, and then you find out that it's just part of the series. And then the, the cult of Chucky brings back, uh, the, the kid who played Andy in the first movie. Um, and so it's just cool what they're doing with the franchise. And then shortly after cult of Chucky came out, did fairly well. Um, mm-hmm. Don Mancini, the, the creator and writer announced that a TV show was coming out. And shortly after that, Orion Pictures was like, well, we're also rebooting it. Huh. And so Don Mancini... Has the TV show come out? Huh? Has the TV show no, come out? No, not yet. It's still okay. in production. Gotcha. Uh, I don't even think they've started filming yet. Okay. And so... They, there are two versions of this franchise. And so Orion Pictures was like, we're doing this thing. We own the title Child's Play. And mm-hmm. the story. So we can do whatever we want. Hey, Mr. Mancini, would you like to be involved and help? And he's like, no, I'm still working. And they're like, we're still going to do it <laughs> anyway. That's so weird. It is weird. It's, it's pretty unprecedented. I've never heard of anything mm-hmm. like this before. Um, and so I had a lot of trepidation going in in the first place. Uh, cause mm-hmm. I'm such a fan of Mancini and, and, and the franchise as a whole that I felt, you know, like on his side. I, I didn't want to betray his honor by not, uh, going in. Um, and then I started to hear good things and they announced Mark mm-hmm. Hamill as the voice of Chucky and that yeah. it's kind of different. He's a, he's a robot and not, uh, a, you know, possessed by the spirit of a murderer. Mm-hmm. 
And so that kind of intrigued me. And I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to see this, but I will definitely put my, um, time and money into the series as well whenever that comes out. So going in with a little trepidation, uh, that, that was kind of new. Were you aware of any of this? Um, just from what you said last time you were on the podcast when you were talking about Cult of Chucky. Yes. Other than that, completely out of the loop. And honestly, I didn't even really have that much interest in seeing Child's Play, the, this new one. Yeah. Um, it was kind of just a whim kind of thing. Um, it's funny because uh, I mentioned this in the in the pod chat, but uh, I had a ticket to see it last Friday. Um, I I because okay. Behind the curtain, I was a guest on uh, Submitted for Your Approval, uh, a Twilight Zone podcast from my friend Brandon. Um, he had me on for, to talk about an episode of, of the Twilight Zone. And that night I was like, okay, I, I have time to, I can go see a movie after I record with Brandon. Um, but I wanted to give enough time for us to record in case there were any snafus or anything. So I, uh, set, I got a ticket for like 10 o'clock, uh, like a 1040 showing of Child's Play. And I was like, okay, that, that should be fine. It's a Friday night. I usually stay up late anyway. Um, after we recorded, I think I, I made some dinner and I just kind of like laid down just to kind of rest my eyes for like a minute. And this is at like, like probably seven or eight, um, woke up at like 11 PM, <laughs> completely missed the movie. And I was like, okay, yeah. that's, and I wasn't too like upset about it. Cause I was just like, okay. It's well, and it whatever. wasn't meant to be. Yeah. But I did end up seeing it. So anyway, uh, anything else on the background of it? No, I, I think that kind of okay. catches you up to speed. Cool. So, how did you feel about this movie? Um, I guess you you have to consider the background mm-hmm. when I give my answer. Um, <laughs> and I think as as a slasher movie, as a movie with kind of some interesting ideas, like a you know, it's a, it, there's there's a there's some aspects to it um, so that are almost like it's a Black Mirror episode, right? The, you know, technology sure. and what do we do with that? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's called Child's Play and children are kind of the center of the movie. I really kind of liked mm-hmm. that. I, I liked all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I thought there were some creepy elements. The kills were just gross and awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, there is kind of an early scene. I, I won't spoil, but there's an early scene where... Chucky, who is just a, a robot, mm-hmm. kind of w- witnesses um, killing and witnesses evilness and kind of yeah. takes that on. And that's, I thought that was a really good, effective scene. That's, that's really interesting because I, I would have thought that that would be kind of a point of contention, like with maybe with you specifically, because yeah. I feel like that was telling, I feel like that was, a, the statement that that was making was about violence and like uh, kind of that whole like uh, violent depictions of violence. And, yeah. And um, trying to dance around spoilers. Yeah, but, yeah, I know. I know. Well, um, I think it's less about the violence and more about um, wanting to impress Mm-hmm. the kids right his the his reaction line, his line is i thought you would laugh yeah right it's the so reaction that's what of stuck the violence with me. yeah does, does that make sense totally <clears throat> it's funny like i i really didn't like the uh, so okay i don't have that history with child's play the franchise like mm-hmm. i've seen one or two of the entries like long ago i started watching the first one uh, like within the last like three or four months just on a whim um didn't really get that far into it just because i just wasn't engaged with it but i did get that introduction of what happened to cause chucky to be chucky mm-hmm. in the in the original and the way it's done in this one just feels I just, I didn't like it. I did, I didn't like the way, like the origin of Chucky in this, in this movie, cause there was nothing. Oh, it's so inconsequential, mystical. isn't it? It was what? It, so exactly. inconsequential. Yeah. And like the way that it's shown, like that by its, by its, like, uh, by its conceit within the movie, within the logic of the movie, it's like, wait for the battery to die. <laughs> like, 
I, I don't know if there was anything that they said, like like if there was like a, an arc reactor kind of thing going on. Right, yeah, that's But it's true. like, it's not a perpetual motion machine or like a perpetual source of energy. It's like, it has a finite battery. Um, but it's interesting that you brought up the comparison of Black Mirror, because it is similar to, like it has some interesting things to say about Black, like in regards to technology, similar to Black Mirror. But what I find interesting about that is that the original Child's Play, my understanding or my connection is that like kind of the original like possessed doll story is in twilight zone which is compared to black mirror a lot or black mirror is compared to that so it's interesting that in 1988 there's oh yeah a connection a there point. yeah and then here in 2019 we have we have this it's just it, i find i find that kind of interesting and um yeah there's certainly a lot of parallel there isn't there yeah but I agree with you. The slasher aspects, the violence was was really cool. Yes. Um, but everything in between was just so, like you said, inconsequential for yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Also, I just thought like the writing wasn't there. Like the, I didn't believe the kids. Like the kids just were, they were got on my bad. nerves. They were pretty bad. Yeah, for sure. They were obnoxious and like the logic, like the logic that they follow when certain things happen in the movie. I'll disagree with you on that. Oh, interesting. Cause like my read on it is like the, like their logic, like there's one thing that they do. I know that kids follows, are dumb. Yeah. Kids are well, dumb. And we kind of like chuckled when Jake and I watched oh, really? that. We're kind of like, yeah, kids, that's the kind of problem solving that kids come up with. <laughs> I, in theory, I, okay. I don't know. I, in theory, I, I get it. Like, it's funny, but it's like, I feel like that's just a little too dumb. And maybe kids are just that kids dumb. Kids are that dumb. <laughs> are, are, yeah. uh, um, the present. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, the I, was idea... putting a pa- I was putting a pause on it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the present is pretty dumb. It's And it's <clears throat> not so much the actual present, but the... The resolution of that in the 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 uh, time frame that it gives the kids, like I laughed out loud, I like yeah. I that, chortled. That gives I was us so two dumb. days, huh? That gives us two days to figure. Yeah, out. I was yeah. like, okay, that's ridiculous, yeah. but, um, but yeah, and like uh, like I said, the slasher aspects of it was was pretty were were pretty interesting. The violence was cool, but. It didn't have that connective tissue to make me more engaged with the story overall or the movie overall. And it just, I just left the theater just thinking like, that's something that I saw and it's just, it's not going to factor into my top 10 list yeah. <laughs> by any stretch. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I, I'm with you on that. Um, I kind of liked that stuff that I was talking about, the slasher stuff. But when it came mm-hmm. to a Chucky movie, I I really didn't I, I didn't feel creeped out. Like there's the scene in the original one where mm-hmm. the mother like Ch- Chucky talks, and so she checks the batteries, and he turns out and says, "I'll," you know, a bunch of swear words and sure. calls her a b word and whatever. Like that's still terrifying to watch. I think thirty years later. Um, that's, that's, that's creepy to me. And that, that just doesn't work when he's just an AI, whatever. Yeah. So. what do you think of Mark Hamill? He, um, I feel like it's a sin to besmirch his name. Yeah. How do you mean? In that it was just okay. I don't think it was his fault. Oh, gotcha. I think he was just an AI mm-hmm. thing, <laughs> you know? I don't know. That's fair. Um, let's see. Uh, anything else on? I mean, it's kind of brief, but we, you know, no, anything else I, on I, Child's Play? I, I think our, I think our lack of things to say kind of speaks volumes. Says enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, do you want to see a sequel? Is there a sequel planned? Will you see a sequel? Do you care? <laughs> well, I would a hundred percent go see a sequel yeah mm-hmm. um do i think there should be or will there be i don't th- i don't think it made a whole lot of money i think it was kind of a failure i don't think so either wasn't it i think so too but also i kind of feel like and maybe this is different for like modern 
horror movies, but I mean, it didn't make a lot of money, but I wouldn't imagine that the budget was very high. That's true. Either. Yeah. How much does one have to make for it to even, yeah. for it to qualify? Yeah. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yep. Um, so let's kind of wind up a little bit. That's our review of Chuck or child's play. Um, so yeah. Would you recommend people see it? Or what is, here's something. It's in theaters right now. Uh, this is releasing July 4th, fingers crossed. Um, what movie would you, would you recommend people go see it today? Or is there another movie that they should see above? Oh, that? go see Annabelle instead. Nice. Yeah. Sorry sure. that I couldn't watch it. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. It. That's okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to kind of wind down this segment of the episode with a, uh, uh, lightning round potpourri. Sorry, I thought you... I was gonna sneeze. Okay. <laughs> I thought like you looked like you were possessed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna do lightning round potpourri. Uh, <laughs> Mike, you're gonna pick something that you're that you that you've watched re- recently. I'm gonna pick something I've watched recently. So go ahead, Mike. And what is your lightning round potpourri? <clears throat> the thing, the thing I want to talk about today. In my lightning potpourri. Man, I could talk about so many. Okay, so mm-hmm. last night I watched uh, Dario Argento's Tenebrae. And that okay. is one that's been on my list for a long time. Um, so I I consider myself a student of the horror genre. Uh, mm-hmm. And I feel like I've been really well-versed in horror of the last 30 years. Um, but a lot of what kind of predates the 90s, um, aside from kind of the popular stuff, uh, I, I just haven't seen enough of. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, I kept hearing a lot about, like, the, the Giallo films of the 70s and 80s. Uh, Italian Giallo films are... Um, they're like murder, mystery... They're like detective movies, mystery movies, but particularly gory like the kills are are particularly bloody and violent uh and so um a lot of the scholars of the genre kind of say that they are the precursor to american slashers uh so giallo is kind of is an italian phrase so they're generally italian italian detective films murder mysteries where the kills are incredibly violent gave way to kind of the american uh, slasher. In fact, there there are some kills in like the Friday the Thirteenth franchise that borrow uh, from oh, some of the old Italian giallos that that kind of catch a little flack for that. <clears throat> okay. So, as a pretty hardcore student of slasher films, uh, especially from the eighties and nineties, and uh, you know, in particular Friday the Thirteenth, um, I I wanted to know what influenced those. And so I started hearing about Dario Argento and, and these giallos. Uh, and his most famous film is probably Suspiria, but that's more right. of a witchcraft movie than a giallo. Uh, and so his best giallo, at least as far as what I've read is this movie Tenebrae, mm-hmm. which is an Italian a movie made by Italians, Dario Argento, um, starring, some Americans filmed in Europe, okay. right? Film filmed in Italy, and mm-hmm. so a lot of it is like re. Uh, there's like ADR, even though they were speaking English in it because some of their okay. accents are anyway. Whatever. Um, Interesting. So Tenebrae came out in 1982, and it was super tense. I loved it. I loved it. So it's about this uh, American writer, uh, and he's in Rome doing like a book tour, uh, and women start to be stalked and killed, like based on killings from his book. And so he has oh, to work with the detective trying to figure out who's doing these killings. Um, and there's some really violent stuff, and it was just cool to see, like, um, see a slasher film with a more intricate m- mystery plot. Um, you know, like I've said seven times now that it predates slashers. Slashers are, there's, there, you know, three types of slasher plots. And this was cool mm-hmm. to see 
kind of a murder mystery detective whodunit um, with the slasher elements in place. So I, I'm I'm super into kind of checking out a lot of more of these Jallo films. Uh, but mm-hmm. Tenebrae is a is a pretty high recommend. For me. Nice. Yeah. How is like the gore and everything? Like, is it? Like you said, it's tense. It's like, is like the violence. How, how's that? It's impressive. It feels like okay. '80s slasher. Like, um, interesting. You know, there are. It it doesn't cut away. There are some violent stabbings, and um, there's like some axe kills that are pretty hmm. good. There's one toward the end. Um, can you spoil a thirty-seven-year-old movie? Uh- should you? I don't know. I don't uh, know. I think it's out of the public eye enough, but I think that yeah. talking about it brings interest to the listener. <laughs> yeah. So I'll so. just say uh, uh, somebody gets a limb hacked off and we just okay. see it in all its beautiful glory and bloody mess. I mean, it's, it's, it's bloody. It's, it, I mean, it's gross. It's a gross movie. It's awesome. It's not, okay. I wouldn't say it's over the top. It's not, uh, you know, it doesn't, hold a candle to any of the uh any of the torture porn movies or even you know a rob zombie um uh, but like as far as slasher goes it's i mean it's violent and bloody very cool it's and good yeah tenebrae uh, tenebrae yep okay um is that like a google play rental or like uh was it shutter or i watched it on shutter yeah gotcha okay cool um, okay, well, I will go ahead and talk, uh, briefly, because there's not really much to talk about with it. Uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, did you like it or didn't, do you not like it? No. I, you know, we went in, uh, Jake and I went in thinking, like, maybe they'll do it. Maybe this will be the <laughs> one where they get the human part right. Mm-hmm. And it was not. They didn't do it. Nope. Yeah, like, there are some things about, like, there's one, like, character turn that as over-the-top and crazy as it is, I kind of appreciated in terms of, like, oh, I didn't really see that coming, but also the language of the movie didn't really spell out that that's what was happening until, like, after that reveal happened, like, they had to explain it to the audience, essentially. Yeah. And so, like, there's so much of that, like... There's a scene where a character gets killed and then like the, the the action scene in which that character meets their demise is so incoherent and hard to follow. Like the next scene they had to show, I assume because it's so edited so poorly that they had to do this in like reshoots or whatever. They showed a screen that had the character's face and then this the line said deceased right next to them. And I'm like, oh, okay, well... That person did die because yeah. I couldn't fucking tell in the scene. And like, I would say two thirds of the action in the movie is solid and interesting and entertaining for the popcorn value that I went into it for. Yes. The other third is incoherent mess that they just had like set at night, like all the benchmarks of, of disguising poor CGI, like nighttime, rain, yeah. overcast, like, yeah. like just darkness. Just like all of that. And I was just like, in quick cuts and everything. I was just like, I'm so tired of this. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. It's just so lifeless and, and uninteresting to me. Um, uh, yeah. Quick spoiler, if I could. So sure. listeners, if you don't like spoils, just stop listening for about 10 seconds. Um, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe they did a let's hit reset on the world plot. On, on yeah. human existence. When she said that, I, I mean, we were laughing. We laughed in the oh, theater. Yeah. Like, I can't believe they fucking went with this plot. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, I could like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. It, we're it was. watching I did... a hit the reset button plot. I was stunned. Yeah, it, it's in theory, it's ridiculous, and in practice, it's ridiculous, and everything. When that character turn happened, I did appreciate it because I didn't see it coming because it's so ridiculous and over the top and dumb. But it doesn't. It did. There was no follow through on that characterization or anything. Like it just. It felt. Yeah, they like, almost walk it back a little. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just it. It didn't work for me. She immediately realizes that's a dumb idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's- 
Okay. And it's funny, like I, I went, so, so like there was a moment like, okay, throughout the movie, I'm sitting there like kind of eyeing my, the time thinking like, okay, I have this much time left in this movie. (laughs) And then I was like, I really got to go to the bathroom. So I got up and I ran out and went to the bathroom, came back and I was like thinking like, oh shit, I hope I didn't miss anything important. And then like, it just, it was the, on one hand, it's a funny, like coincidental moment. But on the other hand, it's like, this is how shitty the writing was because I got back into the theater as the characters are literally explaining to one another exactly what they're about to do. Yes. And it was like, it was just like, I can't believe we're really doing this. And it's like, they're just rehashing something that they've already set up. Yes. And I was just like, this is, uh, thank you guys, but I, this is dumb. So Um, a couple things did, did the movie argue that, that Godzilla created human life oh i don't know in a way not created but sparked it huh i i think by the time that type of thing is perhaps hinted at i was so checked out i didn't even register with me (laughs) um yeah so i don't know the other thing is uh was like watching people defend the movie like Mm. You know, Interesting. the meme was like, reviews for Godzilla say the human part of it is not good, but the action is good. It's like, what did you expect? It's a Godzilla movie. And it's like, Ugh. yeah, but that's all of them. Is it so yeah. much to ask for a good plot? Right. That's what's, I mean, yeah. whatever. If you like the movie, that's that's awesome. I'm so glad sure. that you did. Um, yeah. But I don't think it's too much to ask for 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 both totally agree and like one of the other like big gripes i had with it was just the way that even like if most of the action set pieces were cool and interesting and engaging they still introduced ridiculous like uh um wrinkles to each plan like they'd be like the monsters would be fighting and then suddenly it's like oh wait now we have this thing it was so lazy because it was like now, okay, now we're bored with the monsters fighting, so we have to introduce something else that we're not going to seed at all in the movie. It's just like, we're, we'll throw this in there, or we'll throw in this wrinkle, or like, they'll have this complication, and then obviously this person is going to choose to do this action, um, and it's supposed to be a big significant moment, but it's like, no, it's just, it's so rote and cliche and just really lifeless. There's no, there's no, um, fanfare surrounding it or anything like that it's mm-hmm. just it's just there it's ugh. so i don't know um but yeah that's godzilla king of the monsters uh i didn't really care for it won't see it again or anything um it is what it is but we have actually been recording for a very long time <laughs> and so we are going to go into our what we recorded before this, which is a very long, uh, kind of loose, loose conversation that I hope you guys enjoy. But yeah, we're just going to cut right into that. So Mike, I said this like f- three hours into this recording, but, uh, glad to have you back on. I think I said, did I tell, did I tell you glad to have you back on? No, I was waiting oh. for it. No, I'm just so I'm so glad mind. to have you back on <laughs> and, uh, hope we can get you on more and everything as always. Yeah. And, uh, this has been fun. It's great to catch up with you. I did say that. Yeah. It has. Yes. I think. Absolutely. I don't know. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think that'll do it. So enjoy this, uh, extended conversation episode. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you for listening. Uh, next kind of thing that I've, I've been very excited to talk to you about is yeah. you were talking about Toy Story 4. Yes. Um, and that was your son Oscar's first movie theater experience. It was, yeah. Um, and it's funny because on the, on the Patreon feed with, uh, like last time on the <laughs> Patreon feed, uh, when I asked Tiny about the six years of podcasting thing, like he had mentioned, uh, we actually had a really good conversation about it. So check that out at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. But he had mentioned that like the podcast is like he, he doesn't think of anything. Uh, he doesn't think of anything he does as leaving a legacy or anything, but he loves the idea that wow, he can yeah. point to, yeah, that he can point to something on the internet and be like, Hey, this is a 
thing that I have. And like, like he said, like when he has, like when he has kids, like when they grow up enough to like watch movies with him and stuff, he would be like, well, Hey, you can download this yeah. episode of the podcast that, you know, our we commentary about track to back to the future so, too, son. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is okay. Uh, you mentioned that and I'm super proud that we did that. And we did that at the time. And like the timing worked out perfectly for back to the future day. Sure. I want to say that that is one of the lowest downloaded episodes. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> yeah, I think because fine. it's a commentary, it's a commentary. track and <laughs> people think that, you know, you have to watch the movie. Yeah. Um, which is funny because I am planning on doing a, an It Chapter 1 commentary track for Tower Junkies in preparation for Chapter 2. Nice. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, uh, so anyway, your son Oscar, first trip to the movie theater. Mm-hmm. Yep. How was it? Uh, let's, let's talk about it. It was okay. I'll start there. Okay. That's a bad way to lead into it because <laughs> then, then you just check out. Um, so I had thought about it for a long time. I mean... Probably before we had kids, I was like, yeah. what, what is, what's the first movie going to be? What, how, you know, how, do we wait long enough? When, mm-hmm. you know, when is too early? Um, and if you don't mind me interrupting real quick, sure. we've talked about it on the podcast before. Uh, we did that episode with you, you, me, and Tiny, where we just kind of caught up like extended, extended poker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you had mentioned, like, well, he's not, like, Oscar isn't old enough to watch a full movie and everything. Right. Has he gotten to the point where he can watch a full movie from no, beginning to end? still okay, no. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's not so really anyway, a thing yeah. uh, gotcha. for us. Um, I don't know how kids work, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't really either. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I've, uh, I know some friends and some parents whose kids watch m- movies all the time. I mean, they're Oscar's mm-hmm. age and they have favorite movies. Um, Oscar is not, does not like to just kind of sit and watch a thing for too long. Um, mm-hmm. especially not a movie. So, gotcha. um, we in town there's kind of a cheap seats theater and they had this uh like week where they were showing kids movies early and we thought that would be good but we couldn't find a movie we liked and so that didn't work out so but then on that friday toy story was coming out and we're like okay Mm -hmm. why don't we just take them to toy story and see what it's like you know i had this idea in my head that his first movie, he would be four. Like we would wait till he was four. Cause I remember, like, I think I was, uh, I guess I was three for my first movie. Mm -hmm. And I I remember my brother was four when we saw hook, which was his first Mm -hmm. movie. Um, and so my son turned, uh, three at the beginning of June. And so we were, my wife was just like, let's just do it. Let's see. So we rented, uh, the Toy Story that Time Forgot, like 30 minute okay. Christmas episode or whatever. And we watched mm-hmm. that and he really liked that a lot. Nice. Um, and so we're like, okay, do you want to see a longer one of this? Uh, and so we like prepare, like we, um, my brother got him a Buzz Lightyear for his birthday and he's Aww. into the Buzz Lightyear. And so we cut, like, he's aware of, you know, the, 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 the IP. Sure. Right. <laughs> to, to put it in a gross way. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went to the theater and we got all the, all the fixings. We got a big old bucket of popcorn, which his eyes just lit up. We, uh, nice. we all shared a root beer. So he got to drink root beer, which is a kind of a rarity. Um, mm-hmm. and then we got him a box of raisinets. So he was already in love with the experience. And so we get nice. in there and the trailers start and he loves it. I mean, he's dancing to the trail. Like there's a, uh, <laughs> trolls world tour, I think is coming out and that, you okay. know, has music in it. And he was like, I got a video of him like dancing. I'm dancing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't nice. see there's no video, but anyway, <laughs> he's like dancing to the trailer and we're like, Oh, this is perfect. Mm-hmm. And then the and then the feature presentation comes on and the lights cut out and he goes I don't like this. Oh God! I'm like, oh shoot! Okay. Oh, uh, did you look at him and were you? Did you look at him and like I have no son? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I said I don't yeah. like you. So <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, and I steeled myself for that experience. Mm. I knew sure. I knew this would not be a dream come true right i i thought sure. that it would be a little rough i thought mm-hmm. boredom would be the issue not the yeah. lights going out oh interesting right so the lights cut out and he he like looked up and he goes i don't like this I go, oh, oh wow okay. so when the movie started and like obviously it's bright and everything did he like did it 
did it work out for him or a did little you have to leave? it got a little okay. better when we were like look there's buzz lightyear right or mm-hmm. th- or there's rex there you know he could kind of pick those out and we kind of laughed at a few things and he settled down a little bit for about 25 mm-hmm. maybe 30 minutes and that was just okay. like i don't it's too dark it's too loud it's too dark oh wow i don't like i don't like Damn. this i don't like this one go outside one go outside and we're like, okay, buddy, just sit tight. So we kind of held him for another 10 minutes. At about the 45, maybe 50 minute mark, he's like, I want to go. I want to go. Uh, so we left the theater. Dang. But yeah. So we're in the parking. We get up. We go, okay. He's just going to. So we get up. We go to the parking lot. And we're like, all right, you ready to go home? He's like, I don't want to go home. And we're like, well, <laughs> you, we either go inside and watch the movie or we go home. He goes, I want to go inside and watch the movie. I'm like, oh my God. Do you want to go inside? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're like, it's still dark in there. Now I want to go inside. Okay. Do you want to go up to the top? Yeah, I want to sit up top. I'm like, all right. So we took him back in, missed, I don't know, mm-hmm. eight minutes of the movie. Went back in, walked up to the top, Jeez. and... um it wasn't super busy, so we we like didn't make him sit in a seat. So we kind of just okay. walked around, you know, in front of us for a little while, and that was a little yeah. better. And he was able to go uh, to the end of that. Mm-hmm. So that's funny. You were at the t- where you you said you were at the top, mm-hmm. like the top row. Yeah. Okay. I just to cut in real quick, and then we'll get back to it. Sure. Um, I saw Godzilla: King of the Monsters. Um, and they, like, there was, like, a family with, like, a little kid that was, like, doing the same thing. And, like, I was in, like, the second row. Yeah. And, like, they were doing, I was, like, I was kind of perturbed by it, but. Yeah. You know. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. You know, I just thought, we went on, on the Friday at, like, Mm -hmm. the one o'clock show. So I was, like, this is all going to be kids. Mm -hmm. I'll feel a little bad. But not that bad. Yeah. Like, and, and to clarify, the Godzilla King of the Monsters screening I went to was a Wednesday night at like 9 p.m. Right. That's problematic. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, there was yeah. like a two, like two or three year old kid. And like, what made it even more awkward and uncomfortable for me was that I was in the seat directly next to like one of the adults in the group. And like, the kid kept walking back and forth among the like family members. And he would like crawl onto the chest of the, of the guy right next to me, which is fine. Yeah. But it was like, like his leg would like brush up against my leg, and I'm like, oh, I don't. Boy. I, yeah. This is uncomfortable. I don't like this at all. Yeah. See, that would make me very self conscious if they were, if he was yeah. like touching other guests. That's yeah. An issue. And yeah, and I was just like, I'm, I, I don't want to, I don't want to catch this having kids thing, guys. <laughs> so yeah. just you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so continue. <laughs> <laughs> if he touches me, I'll, I'll turn annoying too. Right. right? Um, <laughs> so it was kind of not that successful. We were driving home and we we're like, what was your favorite okay. part? And he didn't really talk about it much. And blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. we got home and I, I think we had like takeout that night or, okay. or we had something and I used like a takeout plastic fork and he saw the mm-hmm. plastic fork and he goes, oh, forky. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, like the movie. He's like, yes. Yeah, oh, forky. he said that. Oh, awesome. Oscar di- said that. Yeah. That's it's, awesome. It's Forky. So he, huh. well, like, I talked as Forky with the fork, mm-hmm. like, till bedtime. Like, for two hours. He was That's telling awesome. stories, what he did today. He went to Holiday Wield. And <laughs> that's, a, he's, that's the Aww. cutest thing. Holiday Wield. And <laughs> that's adorable. going down the big, tall slide. And he, and he went up and he goes down real fast. <laughs> and just telling stories Aww. to Forky. And then Forky was like, I like broccoli. Do you like broccoli? And Oscar Aww. was like, I like broccoli too. And he's like, you want a piece? So I like fed him broccoli with Forky. It was Aww. like a, like a scene in a movie, man. It was perfect. <laughs> That's ador- So basically what you're telling me is that you saw Toy Story 4, went and got dinner with your family, and then throughout the rest of the night infringed on the copyright of Disney and Pixar I did at home. properties. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. That's unacceptable. Well, but- <laughs> our forky was just a black fork, not a mm. white spork. So Gotcha. Okay, I think that that would qualify as fair use. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's That's pronounced awesome, the same, but it's actually spelled F O U R K Y R forky. Right. 
Uh, awesome. So that's awesome that he like he like he yeah. So he that did. And, like, he picked was, up on something. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's all. And from what I heard, I haven't seen Toy Story four yet, but Forky's like the standout character. Yeah, from he's what pretty heard. good. Yeah, he's yeah. a standout character in a movie that just kind of didn't need to be made. It's sure. fine. It's a fine movie, but mm-hmm. we are not here to review that. Right. Um, we are here to review Child's Play, but before that, I have a bunch of other news. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna I think. Get us through. I mean, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting to a point where this might just be an extended potpourri. It, it pretty much, okay. yeah. And honestly, I don't think the Child's Play review is going to have much to it. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I just but would there not a- call it a Child's Play review in the, right. in the, sh- in the title of <laughs> the show notes. Yeah. Uh, entertainment news and Child's Play 2019. Yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, let's, let's real quick, or not real quick, but let's, let's. Just how, wherever the wind takes us. Okay. So we've got that, got that. Um, you, okay. You tweeted this, this link to me about digital media yes. and everything and how it's like a license. Like when we, when we buy digital copies, it's a license that we are, buying from it's a lifetime borrow yes right so and that's something that like i know you and i both share some anxiety kind of issues and stuff i mean you we could just stop with you and i share anxiety and go from there oh but we're talking (laughs) about movies anyway go ahead yeah um but like that's always something because i've um as i've grown more and more lazy in my life i've become more and more enamored with digital media as a, yeah. as a point of having a collection because right. it's just so easy to just watch it like perfect example is i okay like for example i went in like had to go get my car worked on so uh at one point like over the course of the last year or so I did that and I like downloaded, I think at the time I was rewatching the, the Marvel movies. So like knowing that I was going to have like 45 minutes to kill. No, no, that's okay. Uh, 45 to, to an hour and a half to two hours. Actually, this is a different scenario. <laughs> this is a different time where I had to get my car worked on okay. to kill. I downloaded from voodoo a copy of, Oh crap. What was the movie? Um, it was a free movie I have in my collection. Um, uh, the movie that has Make Them Laugh. Singing in the Rain. Oh, yeah. Singing in the Rain. Yeah. So I downloaded that to my phone and I just sat in the waiting room and I watched it with my headphones in and watched the entire movie with a, the exception of the last 20 minutes. I watched that when I got home because my car was done. But like, it's just the, the convenience is, is remarkable. Like, it's incredible. Yes. But we have that kind of thing hanging over us that like okay it is like you said a lifetime borrow of a of a movie it's not an actual copy of it so yes um are there ways that you combat that do you just buy like physical discs and then redeem the the digital or well do you have like a how do you feel about that this started for me um i would say probably like in the mid 2000s when i got mm-hmm. my first ipod uh and i was okay. starting to do itunes and thinking oh, yeah. how does this how does this work when mm-hmm. skynet when skynet takes over <laughs> what happens to all our music I and i remember just thinking even that was very odd i was very obsessive about my my cd collection for a long time mm-hmm. i mean you know hundreds of cd's as a high schooler i i loved collecting yeah. cd's and then all of a sudden you know, I was uploading that whole thing to my iPod, and that was cool because I know that I owned those, and right. you know, they're my MP3s, whatever. Yeah. And then what I would do was I would I would buy an iTunes album, and then mm-hmm. burn a copy of it. Sure. To make sure that I had it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, 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 from early on, I was very anxious about not being sure if this is mine. And then I remember an article from Tom Hanks. Do you remember that article? In like uh, the late 2000s. No, nah, 2009, not really 2010. From Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks. Where he was okay. like, when I die, what happens to my iTunes collection? And essentially uh, it goes uh, away. It's not yours. Huh. I mean, obviously your kids, if they know your password, they get all that stuff. Right. But if they don't, they are not entitled to that mm-hmm. lifetime rental of your thing. And I, uh, right away, I was like, oh, that's, that's very odd to me. Yeah. 
Okay. And so after a while, my music collection just got so large that I kind of just made peace with digital music. And, you know, yeah. I subscribe to Spotify and I, and I am a Spotify user. I, I buy very few. Mm. Um, but it took me much longer to do the same with movies. Mm-hmm. Do people like this stuff? I, I talk yeah. so much. My God. <laughs> no, 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 no. They love it. I how, guarantee they love it. <laughs> I, I hope so, man. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I talk at work with one of my best friends, CJ, and I, mm-hmm. we, we joke how I'll, how I'll like qualify a qualify and then I'll qualify the fact that I qualify <laughs> everything. Right. <laughs> and I, yeah. like he'll say a thing. And I'll go, well, <laughs> and sometimes he'll ask me a question uh, or like, I'll explain that I'm doing a scenario talking to somebody mm-hmm. else and he'll go, <laughs> you know, like my son asked me, what daddy, what's your favorite show? And I was telling this to <laughs> CJ, my friend, and he goes, and so what did you reply? Well, when you say favorite show, what do you, mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause I'm such a psychopath. <laughs> Anyway, I I, I do so anyway, I do hope you like it if if you if you oh. do care uh I know Matt cares. That's why I yeah. love you, Matt. But if you're listening you. to this episode and if you if you talk like this, this is how I talk. So so right. hit me up on Twitter. <laughs> I would love to have any conversation uh yeah. with you ad nauseum. So nice. let me know. Hit me up on Twitter. We'll talk. <laughs> um so back to my my long long-winded point. Sure. Um, I also cared a lot about my movie collection, um, Mm -hmm. especially, do you remember moving to college and I had that like trunk of DVDs? Like that was my big thing to move back and forth. Uh, every time I would go, it was this trunk of movies. Got rid of that. We, my, my, my dad and I built a shelf in my room of them. When I moved in with mm-hmm. my wife, we built a shelf. Now they're kind of, so I've, I've always been obsessed with my collection and I still do yeah. buy, uh, DVDs every now and then. And then, sure. and then last summer, I think it was, I found movies anywhere. Yes. Which is this, uh, would you call it an aggregator? It's a, it's a, a spot that keeps yeah, all the, it's, it's not all the different. A couple, a couple of right. studios don't do it, but, but um, it does Google, filter to different Google Play, media, Amazon, like yeah. iTunes, Vudu, uh, what's, which what's I'm the one? terrible about. Peace. Sorry. I, I'm terrible about using movies anymore. Are you? <laughs> Just because it's so, I, like, I find myself like perfect example. So the new Pet Cemetery came out on digital. Yes. And I never got around to reviewing it on Tower Junkies. <laughs> So I need to rewatch it. And I was like, I'm just going to buy it. It's not that good of a movie, but I'm yeah. going to buy it anyway. Cause I, I have a bunch of shitty Stephen King movies on voodoo and I might as well have a Com- sort of mediocre one yeah. for it. Yeah. So I bought that. And I was like, as soon as it's the one that died, rest in peace, which one ultraviolet. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Um, but I bought that on voodoo and I was like, as soon as like that went through and everything, I was like, Okay, well, what if Voodoo dies? Like, <laughs> um, right. I'm screwed, and it might. Yeah. And so this, we'll get to this. This is this is yeah. this is juicy tea, um, mm-hmm. because that's a major concern. Because it's actually happening now that things yeah. are dying, right? Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. So last summer, I started using Movies Anywhere, and I do I do like Movies Anywhere a lot because it 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 um it's like my it's my go to place wherever I am. So like if it's a movie mm. day, I'm showing a movie m- at my students, we can kind of look through my movies anywhere nice. and pick one from there. And it, and it keeps most of them. Um, mm. And so early on, I think digital copies were not all that easy to redeem. You essentially kind of had to like download the movie to the yeah. computer and it was kind of a pain in the butt. And it's funny because Ultraviolet had a lot of like extra steps that had to do with yes. now they're dead. So. Yes, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um like for instance, my Back to the Future Blu rays. I mm-hmm. I like I did the first two and then I hated it so much that I didn't do I didn't redeem the third one and now it has expired. Mm-hmm. So like I don't have yep. this digital copy of mm-hmm. of, uh, of Back to the Future Three. So anyway. I would get a few digital copies and then I went to our, our local family video 
Mm-hmm. And they sell digital copies. And I thought, ah, oh, I could spend seven ninety nine rather than fourteen ninety nine and get these movies right. that I don't want to spend. That like I'm keeping myself from because I don't want to spend that much. So I started snatching sure. those up, and you know it'd be like three for twenty one dollars or whatever, and you you get those. Um, mm-hmm. And so I started redeeming those, and then I was like, well, I have so many DVDs and Blu rays also, so I started redeeming my Blu rays. Sure. And I made a, a stack of those, and I thought, mm-hmm. yard sale. Why do I need these again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gave them away. Because I was, like, trying to make space, trying to consolidate, because mm-hmm. I have so much stuff. Um, and then I started to, uh, f- hopefully there are no copyright lawyers, uh, sure. rip my... Mm-hmm. DVDs. I guess that is legal. You can legally rip your own DVDs. I, as long yeah. as I mean, as long as it's not for a profit. Them. Yeah. So I yeah. started to rip my DVDs uh, and then yard sale those. Nice. Well, is except it for? <laughs> except for um, digital is not better yet. My, my Blu-rays, nah. Ver yeah. buffer. Mm. Never buffer. Interesting. They don't do that. Right. Right? You mm. know, if my computer crashes, my Blu-ray still exists, but those DVDs mm-hmm. are gone. And it's just yeah. this thing we've in, we, in our culture where we've just been okay with fleeting things. Right. right? We're okay not having the tangible. So just mm-hmm. like in a year, I, I'm I'm starting to regret getting rid of some of my copies and it's buying funny. some on digital. Yeah, and I totally get that. And it's funny because I recently, like within the last month or so, um, I came into a situation where, like, okay, my basically I was going to set aside some time to watch an episode of The Twilight Zone, make my notes for anthology, all that good stuff. Um, then my power went out. Like mm-hmm. the entire apartment, co- like a transformer blue or something like that. But like the entire apartment complex just went just dark. So I had this little lantern that my mom got me for Christmas, like a couple of years ago and I had to turn it up and everything. And then like my power was out. So what I did was I grabbed my twilight zone DVDs and I put in the disc into my laptop and yes. I just watched it that way. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. And I was just like, I wouldn't be able to do that because I, you know, didn't have, you know, as long as my battery was okay right. on my laptop. Right. Um, yeah. So and it's just so it's interesting. A couple things are happening where um, this kind of a la carte TV and movie thing that we've kind of been dreaming of for a while is yeah. happening, but not the way we expected it. And mm-hmm. so now all these companies are starting to have their their own streaming, right? Like things are being pulled off Netflix and Hulu, so yes. so Disney can open up, so NBC mm-hmm. can open up its own. And so just recently, I don't know when this episode comes out, but uh, it'll the be hopefully last, Fourth of July. The, okay, so last week of June, it was announced that The Office was leaving Netflix. Mm-hmm. And okay. If you'll allow me just really quick rant, people lost their shit about that. They and did. I was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, it's not the end of the world. Like, I know that it's like the most popular show on Netflix and everything. And I'm just, and maybe I, I was coming at it from like a perspective of like, maybe a, a bit snobbish. Like, well, I bought the DVDs when they came out. So I yeah. have on DVD and stuff. I mean, how um, hot will those DVDs be soon? Oh yeah. Right. Well, that's, yeah. And that's the thing. Like I tweeted, and I was like, okay, let's settle down everyone. It's not like I made this really snarky, shitty tweet where I was like, it's like, it's a real shame that Netflix is getting rid of the only 30 minute sitcom that it has yeah. in its entire lineup. Yeah. yeah right. I know. Um, and then I looked up on Google play and each season is like 30 bucks. And I was like, okay, I'm going to walk back. The There's still full price. Bit. Yeah. 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 But anyway, you know, I, I, anyway. I, d- I don't, I, I mean, I, I am on your side in in that <laughs> argument, and, and this, <laughs> believe me, I have been known to snark. But I do, sure. I do understand the sense of comfort of just putting on Netflix and going to sleep. That totally. is easier, right? right. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. of course, we do that. We, I mean, I would be uh, similarly, but to a lesser effect, flummoxed if Friends mm-hmm. was taken off uh, sure. of of Netflix. Um, 
But I've also, I kind of like, uh, I'm an avid eBayer, so I'll like sell some mm-hmm. things on eBay. Sure. And I will never sell my friend's DVDs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never. I have, I, I have my friend's DVDs on top of my DVD shelf, like in the, in the box that I like special order oh, after yeah. the last season came out. I got the out. same box, baby. Um, or like redeemed or whatever. Yeah. Um, long time listeners there. will know that Matt and I bought season <laughs> yes. 10 the same together night at together at midnight and watched oh, yeah. the last two episodes together. Yes. Synced up on two separate TVs. So nice. It was. Right. <laughs> so Delicious. I have that I have not touched those DVDs in honestly since I since I moved in here I this is like the fourth year I've been in this apartment and even before then I just I never I it was years before I even like yeah. touched those DVDs um, Amanda and I did a series watch when nice. we first started dating mm-hmm. maybe a little later maybe 2012 we did a series watch okay and then it went nice. on Netflix and we don't need to yeah now, do you find, and this is a small tangent, but this is the, this is the episode, <laughs> tangents all around. Um, do you find it irritating, or do you find like the Netflix version inferior because it's the aired versions of the episodes and not the extended ones that are on mm-hmm. the DVDs? Yeah. Um, no, it's not inferior. There's there okay. are there are too many episodes to really be upset about it. Yeah. Um, well, my thing is is that like now when I watch it on Netflix and just having to play in the background, like I know those episodes. Oh yeah, and, forward, and we're done with the chicken fried rice. Y- yeah, yes, exactly. Right, exactly. And it's like those cuts are like it feels like just so jarring to me. Yeah, I'm so that's used funny. To, like those extra bits. I will say I'm now almost more used to the Netflix the the, the air the aired versions. <laughs> I like. Man, we have been through. This is this is this is such a thirty-year-old <laughs> came came of age in the two thousands thing to like brag how many times you've seen Friends. Yeah. All right. How many people do this? Sure. Right. God, sure. it's so gross. Um, <laughs> but we it's the it's the uh, we did a brief for foray into the office for maybe mm-hmm. a year where that was our nighttime show. But other okay. than that. My wife and I have lived together for oh seven years, something like that. Mm-hmm. And every night is friends. That's what's nice. on our TV as we go to bed. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that's, I. It's funny because, like, okay, I we've tried. Like, we did. A, I think we did a week of that '70s show, and we're just like, eh, it's oh not yeah. the same. Hmm. Oh, here's a fun. Here's a fun question for you, real quick. Um, okay, The Office is leaving Netflix. Well, well, I guess you already answered it, but like, what would be the next show down that if it left Netflix, you would be like devastated with, aside from Friends? And probably that 70s show. <laughs> like, do you have anything in your roster that you go through no. as much as those other shows? Okay. I, I, I don't have anything in my roster. It's Friends and nothing okay. else. It's, it's nice. Friends and movies. Nice. Yeah, funny. I, I I mean that literally <laughs> to to kind of answer your question. We we don't we don't sure. cycle through any other shows. Um, okay. Man, we could do I, we could do another episode on Friends in 2019. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> sin, but it it's it's getting dated, folks. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's There's like, some homophobia <laughs> well, that doesn't play. Mm-hmm. There's some jokes and that don't play. Yeah, I. One of my Facebook friends a while ago posted this thing that's like millennial, like a headline saying like millennials are, um, discovering friends and discovering how racist and, and, uh, how, uh, how transphobic and homophobic it is and everything. And then like the person that's on my friends list on Facebook, like went on like a rant saying like, I knew that this was a, a terrible show and it's just, it's garbage and I've hated it forever and everything. And I'm like, okay, I understand like you have your convictions and everything. And I, I, I'm a massive supporter of, of everything that like they're claiming that friends is against, Absolutely. but it's also a nineties show. Right. Like you, like you, I don't think it's fair to assign 2019 ideals to, decades old shows yes you don't even you don't even have to like that show you don't even have to forgive it yeah but you can't condemn something that already happened yeah Yeah, i'm with you there too yeah like like 
view it as a time capsule if you can't view it as entertainment. Like it's yeah. just this is what was acceptable in the nineties yeah. and everything. And it's just it's um, uh, but, but even aside from you're right, but even aside from that, there are there are just character arcs that that don't work anymore for mm-hmm. me. Um I just Monica she I've gone on record as she's my least favorite, but she gets yeah. even worse with every time I watch that show. How awful she is yeah. to everybody. That's one of my things too. Like the the characterizations, like I, I love the characters in and everything, but there's no denying that the characters are archetypes for yeah. the most part. And yeah. it's just it's they're not as well defined as other shows that I've seen. Yeah. Um you know there we were watching last seen. night and there's the there's the episode where they're writing their vows, Chandler and Monica. Mm-hmm. And she writes hers yeah. and they're emotional and Chandler writes a funny one and Monica goes, Chandler and I'm like <laughs> You're marrying a man right. where funny <laughs> is his primary characteristic yeah you know this about him don't be so awful yeah yep so anyway friends it's it's... friends is just okay yeah (laughs) yeah i'm just kidding Um... i love friends i I love it so much it's such a huge part of my life but right uh you know time ticks on yep yep we grow and uh our taste and entertainment change as we grow Uh, so yeah and yep, which is one of the fun things grow. about it's having the podcast. The same show it was twenty mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. Uh, so uh, digital. So yeah. <laughs> so um, they're all becoming kind of segregated. They're all. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there may be a future mm-hmm. where uh, digital is not what we want it to be. It, there, there's been an interesting backlash, at least, mm-hmm. at least on my uh, scope on Twitter mm-hmm. of people being like, yeah, see, this is why I buy physical media. This is why and- Shout Factory Blu-rays are awesome. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about just in terms of digital media disappearing? Yes. Okay. Because I-, I wanted to jump on something you said before, because I've ranted and raved about it, especially on Anthology. Sure. Jump the on it. The growing number of streaming services and how people get so bent out of shape about how like well if everyone has a streaming service that's just as bad as having cable and everything and like like i just i reject that premise for an argument like i just flat out reject it because like people got so bent out of shape about uh the twilight zone being on cbs all access today i just canceled my cbs all access subscription because the twilight zone season ended and until I'm ready to watch, say, Star Trek Discovery, I'm not going to re-up that subscription service. So that's 10 bucks a month because I paid for no ads um, yeah. that I'm not going to be spending on a service that I'm not using. So right. if people get so shitty about like, oh, I want to watch The Twilight Zone, but I don't want to spend 6 to $10 on a streaming service just for that show, it's like, okay, well, now all the episodes are there. Either A, do your seven-day free trial and watch the episodes in those seven days, or B spend ten dollars to access this one show and some of the other shows throughout the month and then dump the service like drop like if you have multiple streaming services as you're implying since you're complaining about having too many drop one of them yeah use that money that you would pay for that to get cbs all access watch the twilight zone and then get the other one like swap them out the next month like i don't i don't see the problem like how do you feel about that like do you yeah i think i see where you're coming from but if if i were to kind of diagnose those those people i kind of also understand where this thing that is supposed to be um you know on demand is is supposed to put the schedule back into your hands Mm-hmm. Right, but I think not even that three dollars a month or ten dollars a month is price gating. But by making sure. uh, making a price and saying you have to go here, I think it's I think mm-hmm. it's taking some of that ownership that people believed that they were going to get. Okay, sure, that, right, that makes sense. It's it's kind of and, and not to say it's right or wrong. I just I think that's mm-hmm. the mental process there. Mm-hmm. I think the idea is when we were going to get a la carte, it was like, he, you're, you're, here's your list of the 10 things for this price mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, I want to pay for that one because, you know, the average TV viewer 
say what you will about our accolades, but we are not. Mm-hmm. We are the obsessive viewers, right? right? That's the true. average viewer is not up to date on canceling all their subscriptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because I, you know, I'm done today. That's a good point. Because, like, because my whole thing is that people are acting like, and there are. It's your life. So I mean, t- t- <laughs> in the best way. That mm, knowing that kind of stuff is your is your is your um chief hobby is your chief yeah, interest exactly like it's not like we're not the broad audience of of this like streaming services and everything but it's just like I I like they know when they're signing up that they're not signing up for like a year long contract like they do with co- with cable services right, that's like true I don't just, know that I, they do know that. No, they should true. know you are correct, but I don't think yeah. they know that. Yeah, but like I have, and this this will be kind of a fun game, real quick. Um, how many streaming services do you have currently, like subscribe to right now? Um, I don't, I don't want to say on the record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. because the the difference between how many we have and how many we pay for is not the same. Gotcha. Number. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, we pay. We have Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. We use. We use. I'll say that. We use sure. Amazon Prime. We use Netflix. <laughs> we use Hulu, and we have an MLB TV account. Okay. And I'm trying to think if there's a, oh and Shutter. Oh yeah, right. Uh, cool. I I have. I pay for um, Prime, although I have the student discount, so I have like seven, or five, six months free, which is awesome. And then after that's fifty percent off each month. So what Prime? Freaking awesome! Uh, Prime for like students. So since I'm in school right now, uh, I've got a free kind of six month thing. Okay. But Prime, Netflix, Hulu, um, and it's funny because <laughs> um, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot here but i have hbo go which i resubscribe to to watch game of thrones and game of thrones has been off for a while now and it's like there's other stuff i want to watch on on hbo go but i haven't gotten around to it so yeah. i'm just kind of keeping that um and then i just canceled cbs all access and i think that's all that i have um but yeah like if the good thing about like amazon prime is you can add channels to it so like if I want to re up uh, Shutter, which I might do like when we get closer to October, I'll just cancel HBO Go or I'll swap it out for something else. Like, did Stars you like? Or did you like Shutter? I did. I just didn't use it enough. Um, yeah. It just it was something that I intended to watch more, but I just didn't have time to watch as much on it. I so. feel the same way, and I prefer it in groups. Mm. So uh, mm. um, I watch. Like a couple of Fridays, uh, we did the Joe Bob Briggs last drive in. Okay. And so we would now, go over to my friends and watch those okay. together. And it really, it's a, it's, I think, I mean, I think a lot of horror movies are better to watch in a group, but to kind of yeah. like shudder as a service, it's almost like a party when we could all get together. Nice. Yeah. Now, Joe Bob's last drive in thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is that? Is that like kind of a Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of thing? Because I've seen it. No, but, not okay. constant like MSTK. Okay. Um, MST3K. Mm-hmm. MST, what am I saying? Mystery Science Theater Mystery 3K. Science yes, yes, Theater yes, yes, yes. Yep, you got it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long. I don't watch the new one. I just, the, oh, just yeah. the old ones. Anyway. Sure. Um, So Joe Bob was kind of a horror host on like TNT and TBS, you know, a couple decades ago where, Mm -hmm. where he would do, uh, marathons and he had a weekly show and he was kind of, so he basically would just come in, uh, at the commercial breaks. Remember like, like TBS dinner and a movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what Joe Bob does. Gotcha. And now Shutter obviously doesn't have. Commercials. commercials but yeah. you know every 15 minutes he'll pop on and just give trivia and that's so cool and it's 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 really pretty great we like I, damn i might need to re-up and and get shutter and check that out because that sounds awesome yeah he does a lot of like super deep cuts but then he'll do you know like texas chainsaw massacre mm-hmm. um 
Henry portrait of a serial killer. Um, there's a couple newer things, but yeah, he's, it's great. It's great. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Um, so, uh, should we continue down the list of things? Yeah. Keep going, man. Um, okay. Okay. So on, the, <laughs> on the topic of horror, <laughs> let's talk about rare horror. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, I wish I would have known. Hold on. Let me pull up a list. Okay. Yeah. Um, rare just horror. for, yeah. Okay. The, no, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. Rare horror, the, the Twitter account. That whole meltdown oh, thing. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Okay, okay, I got you. Yes. yes. Oh, God. Just, my God. I don't like, know that there's a lot to say about that, except... There's not. But I just want to have it as a... I just want, like, a chronicle of what happened Please, here. please do. <laughs> because yeah. it was such a weird thing of, like, schadenfreude yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, just to watch that, like, that train wreck. And maybe that makes me an asshole, but I don't know. But it's... It just, it was such a weird meltdown because basically what happened for the listeners, I'm going to put a link in the show notes. Um, He's still going. He updates the blurb under his name every, it, he every does. couple days. Yeah. Like, what the, f- uh, so Rare Horror, and it's funny because, um, okay, I'll get to that in a second, but Rare Horror was this social media thing, blog, that they just shared, like, horror-related things on Twitter and everything. And, right. One of the like types of things that they would do is they would post like uh Etsy like art from Etsy stores. Yeah, and so they shared one that was a like a what was it a crocheted like was it crocheted? Yeah, of Samara know. from uh, Samara from The, the Ring. Ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it looked very cool and everything. And then someone replied was like, "Hey, uh, you want to put the link to the artist like store and right. everything?" And they're like, "Well, we don't like doing that because uh, it makes it look like an, makes it look like it's an ad." And then people just piled on and was like, "That's yeah. an asshole thing to say." <laughs> well, and by our analytics, we know that mm-hmm. people don't click on ads, and so they right, yeah. And then they they doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on their shitty position. Yeah, <laughs> it was just such. A weird, weird meltdown. The entire internet f- horror film Twitter mm-hmm. community was just like, dude, you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. It's just the complete arrogance. And like, like the, whoever was in control of that, cause I think there was multiple people that were like involved with that Twitter handle. They were like, um, they were like, well, I've been, I've been, working in marketing for years and i know that this is a fact that this is all that and i'm like when i saw when i saw that i was like you follow thousands of people and you have like tens of thousands of followers like you clearly and like i remember that twitter handle like following me because i tweeted something years and years ago about horror and it's like the reason you have a big amount of followers and everything is that you mass follow people and everything. And that's something I just, as someone who uses Twitter, I don't like that as a right. thing. Cause like anytime, yeah, like anytime I get like a new follower, I will check the, I will check their profile. And if they follow, if they follow more people that than who follow them and it's like in the thousands, I'm like, okay, there's no reason for me to follow this person. Cause they're not following me for my content. They're following me for me to, for me to follow them. Yeah. And it's just, it's annoying. Um, but yeah, so anyway, they just went, <laughs> they just, they were very arrogant and, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, vulgar toward like, the, and toward, oblivious and completely oblivious. Yeah. Um, just so shitty and just then Dread Central, uh, t- tweeted the, the art with the link to the artwork yes. and then, when Rare Horror shut down their page or made it private, they're like, thank, thank Dead Central for, or Dread Central? Yeah. Dread Central. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for bringing a bunch of trolls to, to make this not fun or whatever. And I'm just like, oh my God, yeah. the arrogance could you, and. Could you be any more of a piece of shit? Exactly. It's just, it's so, it's so entertaining. I'll put a link in the show notes that, that explain everything and, and puts it all together. But man, it was such an interesting. It was an interesting ride. <laughs> yeah. It was a train yeah. wreck. Yep. You don't want to stare. Uh, can't look away. No, no. 
Did you have any thoughts on that? Or as as someone who is a part of the horror film Twitter community uh, yourself? Uh huh. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. No, kind of the same. And you know, my the 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 what Matt is alluding to, if you didn't know, is I, I wrote a couple articles mm-hmm. for Bloody Disgusting, so I follow <laughs> the guys there, uh, and I I I um, noticed that they chimed in, and and John, mm-hmm. uh, the guy who kind of runs the show at Bloody Disgusting, John Squires. Mm. What is is like the nicest guy? He's all about mm. peace and respect, and that um, really comes through in his response to that. Like I, I have tons of respect for him just based on that. Yes, uh, and just this dude. This was, was just oblivious, man. It's crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Yep, and I guess we don't really need to talk that much about it yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's we, just a fun like chronicle too much for time. this now. Oh, um, let's keep keep so going let's, down the list, man. What else you got? Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Two topics. things. This is what this episode is. Topics. This is this is topic episode. Yeah. I love it. Uh. So I want to get your read on the Doctor Sleep trailer. Did you oh, see that? Yes, I did. Well, I I avoided okay. it for a little while. Uh. But oh, when that's we right. saw you said you were gonna avoid when it. we saw Annabelle, I I it, it's mm-hmm. it's like the it's like the marshmallow experiment with the kids. You know what I'm talking about? No. Well, the if you don't eat this marshmallow, I will mm. give you two marshmallows later. Oh yeah, okay. And the kids can't do it, right? They just mm-hmm. can't. They just can't. And so yeah. that that is the response. Uh, that's mm-hmm. not mine. I read that on Twitter somewhere. Yeah. Uh, um, I thought there was a, uh, um, like a YouTube video. I saw like a reaction video or whatever. Like like kids doing silly things, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or kids do the darndest things or whatever. But right. like when, uh, when you mentioned it and I didn't know what it was, like my, I, I was, I was going to say like, no, 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 I went ahead, I went ahead and got a shot after I saw Godzilla. So I didn't catch like having a kid or anything. Right. Uh, since Naturally. the kid like brushed Well, my you head, brought like, wipes. Um, yeah. Alcoholic so, rubs. Yes. Um, so anyway. So um, yeah. the, you know, the narrative on like, uh, trailers spoil too much, blah blah blah. Which I agree, mm. they they do. And then people yeah. have responded, "Well, just don't watch." To it's which hard I say, to when you go to the theater, yeah, especially if you go twice a week. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're gonna cl- you're gonna sit there for 25 minutes mm-hmm. with your eyes closed. Come yeah. on, come I've on. Thought- for a while, I or at least a little bit, like I took like earbuds into the theater with me, and I would listen to podcasts during it. But it's like. Yeah. It's I've just, tried. I, I did it successfully with Halloween 2018. Nice. And that was hard. One trailer mm-hmm. was hard. Yep. To do. And I probably had to close my ears and close my eyes mm-hmm. six times. But that was too yeah. many. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's just a stupid argument. Um, yeah. So I saw that, you know, I noticed that it was about to be Dr. Mm-hmm. Sleep, and I just said... Okay, I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever. Um, before we get into like actually talking about it and everything, and sure. that's another thing that I kind of, I'm okay with, is that it's... Um, yeah, isn't this a Tower Junkies? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> but like the thing that I'm okay with with like watching trailers and everything is like I'll see hundreds, like not hundreds, but like dozens of trailers before a movie comes out. And it's like, I just don't pay close. Like I'll watch the pretty pictures and uh, hear yeah. the like crazy sounds and everything. But like, unless it's a movie, like I am very like interested in, I'll like work to not retain what I saw. Like I'll like remember bits and pieces as I'm watching the movie eventually. But like eventually, like it's months before I actually see the movie. So it's like, I can't, I, it's not that big of a problem with right. me. That's um, good for but, you, man. I, huh? I said, that's good for you. I, I definitely, oh, yeah. Well, it's better in theory than in practice. There's a lot of times where I just kind of let it slip. True. But with the Dr. Sleep trailer, first of all, um, a brief Tower Junkies bit, but um, (laughs) uh, you've read The Shining. You've seen The Shining. Have you read Dr. Sleep? I I didn't finish it, actually. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I've heard that it's, yeah, I've heard that it's not that great. We're about to do. I haven't haven't read it yet. Okay. Um, Right now I'm rereading The Shining. And then after that, I'm going to do Dr. Sleep. And we're planning a whole series of episodes for Tower Junkies that hopefully will come to fruition. Nice. Um, which I still need to get you on for 112263. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes. You do. Yes. Yes. Um, I did not so, forget about that. 
Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> Although I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, what did you think of the trailer? Well, the 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 book. I'll say um, I like everything about Danny Dan Torrance, mm-hmm. um, but it, I just the villain was not compelling at all. So, anytime they would switch perspectives, I would really check out, and I mm-hmm. I had it. I was reading it with my eyes, and then I kind of moved to the audio, and I would kind of mm-hmm. got distracted, and I got like distracted for a whole drive home, you know, and like so oh, didn't yeah. pay attention for a good chunk I of the book, that. and I was just like, I don't feel like going. So I didn't finish it. Okay, but gosh, now we're spoiling a trailer. Um, yeah. <laughs> the fact that it's a sequel to the movie is wild very i'm very intrigued it's by that. very powerful man yeah because obviously the book isn't <laughs> yeah right exactly. it's such an interesting thing like even though i haven't read dr sleep like just the idea that there is this movie that is an adaptation of a book that is the sequel to one of the biggest novels of stephen king's career but the movie is going to be a sequel of sorts to the movie that he that doesn't was, like that Stephen King doesn't even like, yeah. like it's just such a weird thing. It is and, weird. um, by uh, Mike Flanagan is, too. I was just going to say, and like Mike Flanagan, like he's who is ace. I, I mean, he is, yeah. he has like filled the whole, the shoes left by James Wan, I think nice. in, ter- in terms of like the go to horror <laughs> auteur. Yeah. Now, anybody and, who is like a huge horror fan, I I know that there are other horror directors doing plenty mm-hmm. of other good work. Please stop. Sure. Right? Uh, listen, I know. But in terms of sheer popularity, mm-hmm. let's try, try to argue with me that there was anything more popular than Hill totally. House. Totally. Yeah. Right? And that's that's something I still haven't watched. I have not I watched Hill House. I can't believe that. It's it's a shame. I I need to sit down and just watch it. And like we talked about lists and stuff, I made the stupid stupid decision to make a list of all the shows I want to watch. Yeah. Um I I won't live long enough to watch all of those shows. Like literally like the shows I have on my list, like old and new, like I will not have the like the remaining <laughs> in the most optimistic words, the remaining time I have left on this planet does not allow for the free time that have I you would done need that to math? watch all of those. Have you done that calculation? Oh, no, no, I haven't. No, I'm just saying just in general. Uh, it's more like I, I haven't oh, done that. Oh, that's incredibly I, yeah. disheartening. Yeah, oh, That totally. is shockingly yeah. disheartening. Mm-hmm. And it kind of makes Unless, me want to throw up a little bit. I will say this with the caveat that that you projection is what what that you can stop time no 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 that too but that projection is based on me needing to have a full-time job that's away from the podcast so go to go to patreon.com <laughs> slash obsessive viewer if you want to pay me like forty thousand a year plus benefits and tuition reimbursement for school and health insurance and a yearly bonus uh, that would be nice too um, go ahead and do that, and I will, I will be able to watch anything I want, and occasionally talk about it on a podcast. <laughs> you don't think you can watch all the sh- like? Surely you can Google how many hours of All in the Family there I is. I don't want to do that right? like work. Google how many be, hours of Cheers there is. I I don't want to do that because it's too disheartening. Like it's it's way too because like I have like NYPD Blue. 12 seasons, 45 minute episodes, 22 episode seasons. That's just one show. Do the math. What's the math? I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to. Um, okay. Yeah. I think you could. I, I think I, well, if that's you made why, that primary, your primary hobby, you could. But that's the thing though. You don't My want primary to. hobby, like, I can't because I have anthology. I have Tower Junkies. I have just A list. A list. Right. Movies. Yeah. Which, that's another thing um, also, on our list here. Yeah, a occasionally a catch up episode. Y- yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Oh, um, occasionally, <laughs> occasionally, I would like to hang out with friends and family. <laughs> also. Yeah. So they it's exist. it's a struggle. It is, but like the list I made is, and that's one of the reasons why I made the list is because I want to, like I have it separate. Like I have each show, and then I have the like season one, season two, season three, season four, 
because I got really bored. Yeah. Um, and as I go through a season, I strike it through and everything. Oh, dude, and then when don't I finish you it, find that that is not good for you? No, uh, I have that. It is dude, a problem. My, my Goodreads stresses me mm-hmm. out. Yeah. My oh, list yeah. of video games to play, it mm-hmm. stresses me out more than it enjoys me to, right? Do you ever, you and me both. like, are you scrolling through Twitter and you see something you might be interested, so you take a screenshot of it and your fucking screenshots stress you out? <laughs> uh, I haven't gotten that far yet, but I totally get that. I absolutely get that. I just yesterday um, categorized my screenshots into podcast, music, and books and movies. Oh, damn. Dude, it's, wow. a, I'm a mess. I am a mess. It's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. and that's, that's Welcome one of the reasons. Welcome to obsessive therapy with Matt and right? Mike. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why, not to, not to do like a plug or anything, but that's one of the reasons why I started Anthology was because I wanted to watch The Twilight Zone and I couldn't, I couldn't make an excuse to watch it without like a podcast. Right. You needed to, you needed to make a facsimile of a prioritization. E- exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And like, uh, even here on by the way viewer. let's let's since we've gone so far afield let's make <laughs> facsimile our hashtag for yes. the day so if you're still hashtag. listening listeners mike white here <laughs> you know that i love <laughs> to give you a, a a checkup hashtag if you're still listening hashtag facsimile yes. at i am mike white at obsessive viewer at obsessive yes. tiny please yes <laughs> that is your hashtag for the episode yep um, so, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Like even on Obsessive Viewer, like when I have, when I have Kirsten on, she and I are doing a TV shop, uh, TV show swap project where oh my she's, word. yeah, yeah, like she'll, she'll come over and we'll watch like two episodes of each show that we've picked for each other. So like we are, we just finished season one of her show that she suggested for me, Flashpoint, um canadian police procedural show okay um and then i'm introducing her to lost and we're nine episodes into lost yeah and it's like that is something that's also kind of just not stressing me out but it's like it's just like it's 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 a reason to rewatch one of like one of if not my absolute favorite show of all time right um which is flashpoint the canadian police procedural you know (laughs) i was trying to think of the joke to substitute and you went with Flashpoint, <laughs> but that works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no. Uh, Listen to me. Is- Listen to me. Yeah. I need you mm-hmm. to believe that it's possible. To watch all the shows on my list? Yes. Because if, th- I can't okay. imagine that it's possible for you. I have mm. kids. Oh, yeah. And it is that- not possible for me. Well, here's the thing, Mike. You don't know how many shows I have on that list. How many? How many television programs? Okay, let me Titles. do some quick. Uh, and I'll, and also, on. why? Huh? Why? Why? Like, do I, I have some? I bet I like I would make you cross some off the list, depending on how long it is. Yeah, and that's the thing. None of these are really big priorities per se it's just shows i would like to say hey i've watched that show yeah i'm interested that's a new thing i say is i would like to have watched this yeah yeah exactly Uh, right yep um and then stephen king would say well it took me 20 years to write and Mm -hmm. right you could you could spend a week reading it like, yeah ah, which oh, well played uncle steve i love that and also that's another that's another stress in my life is like i want to read all of stephen king's stuff oh, Jesus, i just don't I know. know if i will be able to um well i definitely if I, know that i don't want to waste time reading the bad ones that that stresses me out a lot and yeah and that's that's fair but that's the re- like and that's one of the reasons why we started tower junkies is i wanted an excuse to like force myself to read everything but also, like, if I have trouble watching a show or a movie, I am like ninety thousand times slower at reading. <laughs> so it's uh yeah. So that is a struggle. So the amount of shows, the amount of series that I have on this list, um, and again, it's not like these aren't like these are shows I want to watch before I die. But it's like shows that I will never get around to watching all before I die. But 67 TV series titles. Okay. Um, 
I feel oh. like I didn't react the way you wanted me to. Uh, kind of. I'm not shocked. <laughs> yeah, are you not about surprised by that? There are 67 other shows that you haven't watched. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Give I mean, me, I'm give, talking... give me give me the first 15. Okay, so uh, there are shows that have certain priority like I've never seen like the shows that I'm watching right now from this list. Futurama, which I have um assigned to myself the I've like the law in my in my apartment is that anytime I eat a meal in my apartment I watch an episode of Futurama. Okay. Like that's the like that's how I'm working through Futurama. Okay. Um Star Trek the Next Generation and the X Files are the other two I'm currently watching. Um but like there are shows like The Handmaid's Tale I haven't watched. Oh um, okay. Yeah. Um let's see. Ozark, I got like a few episodes into season one and I really liked it, but I just fell off of it. Yeah. Um, the man in the high castle, which I need to watch for, and for a special, uh, project I'm doing for anthology, uh, the expanse, which I love the books, but I just didn't never watch the show. Uh, yeah. And a bunch of 60 some other ones. Okay. So, so it's, it's not just, even like old classic shows or anything. Some of them are like cheers, NYPD blue. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, you know, funny enough, I have kind of, I have kind of made the 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 conscious effort to say, I TV is not going to be one of my hobbies. Oh yeah, yeah. And see, that's that's kind of the trade off that I'm facing here is that it's either TV is one of my hobbies or movies are one of my hobbies. Right. Apparently, this and year it's just, is, is TV. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Because like I already kind of blew my wad on movies last year. <laughs> yeah. So, Dude, you. So you won't match last year, right? It's oh just not no, happening. no. How do you feel about I, that? I, uh, I feel okay. I, I, I feel okay. Like, I feel in December. Were you thinking, how am I going to top this? I wasn't thinking how am I how am I going to top it. I was thinking, I'm really going to focus on 2019 movies and theatrical viewings. And I have failed on that front. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you look at my letterbox, my diary, uh, I think in June I watched like five movies. Whoa. Total. Matthew. And that is without checking. I haven't, I haven't checked the stats or anything, but I believe that may be Your worst the single ever. worst month in the history of tracking my movies yeah. since 20 or since 2007. Yeah. Um, yeah four or five movies and all of them were a list. I think and it's just, it's, it's, I don't know. It's something that I'm wrestling with this year. Um, yeah. How, how, yeah. how so give me, give, explain some of this wrestling. Uh, I really want to make sure that I'm getting on one hand that I'm getting, and this is a ridiculous kind of statement, but I'm, I want, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm getting the most out of a list as I can. Yeah. But, also, by the time like New Year's came around last year, I had already seen enough. I I had already used a list for enough tickets that the price of the tickets, had I bought them like outright without a list, was far far exceeded the amount of money that I paid for a list from June twenty eighth when I signed up last year uh, to. Mm-hmm just last week when I hit the one year mark for a list. Yeah. So, I mean, six months ago, seven months ago, I had already, it had already paid for itself in terms of ticket sales that I saw. Right. Um, so I'm not that struggling with it, but also on the other hand, it's like, I want to make sure that I have the most 2019 movies as I can to make my top 10 list at the end of the year. Yeah. That's the kind of priority. Yeah. Um, cause there are movies that I've missed. And I don't know if I'll catch up on on Google Play or whatever. So, on the week of May fourteenth through the twentieth, I was able to catch nine movies, which is my biggest <sighs> week maybe since I've had kids. That's nuts. It, That's awesome. Isn't that great? Well done. Well, well I, done. I sprained my ankle and I didn't go to work for three days. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so on the sixteenth, I watched four movies. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's not like I it was almost actually, worth it to sprain my ankle. Oh yeah. 
I uh, I took the I took June fifth off from work. Like I took a PTO day specifically because the new season of Black Mirror was coming out, and I wanted to just watch the three episodes during the day. Yeah, and it's and even that's because I'm gonna review it on anthology um each episode and like i wanted to get a head start on that but i was still deeply entrenched in the twilight zone reboot that it's just it's a struggle it's a struggle yeah so yeah um speaking of a list (laughs) i don't know if we're i don't know if we're going to get to uh yeah this is no longer a review (laughs) it's not no uh fuck it it's fine uh facsimile um do you do you have a time where you need to stop cuz I I would say I can go maximum another 45 minutes. Yeah, let's do, let's let's see where we're at at 10:30. Okay, gotcha. My, my time. Um mm-hmm. I I really have no limit, but we've been recording for a while and I would kind of maybe like to focus my eyes elsewhere for a little while. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you t- You were wearing glasses at the start of this, weren't you? I was. Yeah. I took them off. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just get, I just so, get Okay. <sighs> to kind of wind down and wrap up a little bit. Um, we are, uh, on the cusp apparently of Regal Unlimited. Okay. Coming out. Have you heard about this? Uh, let me say this is this is of zero concern to me. Okay, you can I you can talk about it if no you want, regular. but I, I have no okay. stake in this whatsoever. Okay, I really don't either, but I think it's interesting just as in terms of, uh, I guess the commerce of a list and subscription services and sure. stuff. Right, right, right. So I don't think it's officially been announced yet, but like apparently, like later this month, it's heavily. Like, it's all but confirmed that Regal Cinemas is going to come out with their own subscription service akin to, like, A-List or Movie Pass. Sure. Um, which is funny. Okay, first of all, Movie Pass... Does I, it still exist? It... it Apparently it does, but I... Like, I still like the page on Facebook, and I am... This is not an exaggeration. In the last 10 months... Every single time I have seen MoviePass post something on Facebook, and it's usually like a meme or like, a, like oh, this is MoviePass or whatever, every single Facebook comment on every single post is filled with gifts of like snarky kind of tones, like saying like, oh, you still exist or like, 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 uh, like liars and, yeah, um, right. And like just, just, and that, that is 100% of the comments. Like, there's no, like, talk about, like, oh, Movie Pass is great, or movie, I still have Movie Pass. Like, no, I don't know how they still exist. Yeah. Um, I don't either. And it's crazy. It's crazy to me, uh, just to see how it, it has just failed. It just, yeah. f- they're like, we're going to go under for a little while to see mm-hmm. if this works. And it just went under. Yep. Yep. So Regal, so like after that, they imploded and AMC came out with A-List, which obviously I'm a huge supporter of A-List. Um, I was thinking like, it's going to be very interesting to see what other theater chains do with this subscription thing. Sure. Um, and finally, like where, like I said, it hasn't been confirmed yet or announced uh, and everything, but there is going to be apparently a Regal Unlimited service, which is the rumors are that it's going to be, uh, a tiered, a tiered subscription structure. So there's going to be, uh, Regal Unlimited, which is alleged to be $18 a month. Okay. Um, then unlimited plus, which is 21 a month and unlimited all access, which is 2350 apparently. Um, those, some of the delineations of those different tiers are like the, the, the base one regal unlimited is only for, uh, 204 theaters of the 554, like global, like, like nationwide right. regal yeah. cinemas. Um, so this, these are some of the rumored features. So you may reserve three tickets at a time, uh, purchased from the box office kiosks or mobile app. Uh, there must be a 90 minute gap between each ticket reservations. Uh, there's no limit to movies you can see in a day and there's no limit to movies you can see in a month. 
Uh, 2D movies have included have included uh, have no surcharge or anything. But if you want to see like a like a premium format like 3D or IMAX or what have you, there is a slight upcharge of like I think a dollar fifty is the rumored amount. Okay. Uh, that you'd have to pay. Um. Yeah. So I don't know. How do what do you make of this? Do you think that this is going to affect AMC in any significant way? Um. I don't know. I feel bad because I don't. I just have so little stake into it that I was listening to the words <laughs> and not really catching any. There's a lot of numbers and stats that I yeah. just went, oh, that's not. And we've what also I would been do. at it for a while. We have. Okay, so, yeah. So, bottom line. What you're saying is are you worried it'll make A list worse? Or do you think um, this is good for A list? L- let me frame it this way. What would A list? What would AMC have to do to A list to make you consider like not having a subscription service anymore and going back to just things? Or say again, uh, it, what would AMC have to do to A list to make you reconsider having an A list membership? See. Um, make it more expensive than forty dollars a month. Okay. That's that's a good that's a good like number. Yeah. Uh, cuz I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. It has to um, be worth it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry that <laughs> yeah. that's not that's not a very eloquent way to say that, but it it would just have no, to be that's worth fine. my time and money. Mm-hmm. You know, we go I agree. We go I I mean, I now use it more because I have it and I and I've tried mm-hmm. to go to a couple showings, but we bought it for movie night. Right? right, like I, I think the average movie pass and a list user was like, oh, I see a lot now. Now I can go see more, right? Yeah. Now I have this thing. I'm gonna go to more movies, and I think they do. I'm not saying you know. I'm not. That's not a critique. They they do, and that has worked well. Right. Um, we got it because I know that I go to one a week as a mm-hmm. rule for nine years now. Yeah. Um, so I just, you, you cannot, you can't argue with $20 a month to see a movie every week. You can't, right. just can't argue with that. Totally. Um, I agree. And we'll talk more about it on the podcast as this Regal Unlimited service, like, gets announced officially but it was funny because like last night i was just like laying in bed just browsing the internet and i was like wow a list has been here for a year and i can't believe there hasn't been any other uh chains coming out with subscription services and then like i just googled it and like this regal unlimited thing has been rumored for like a month and i'm like it's just that i've been so out of the loop with this kind of like story and everything or like this this uh topic that it's just i completely went over my head and yeah. wasn't on my radar yeah um yeah but uh yeah so i think what we're going to do is do a quick uh potpourri that i'm actually going to throw at the beginning of this episode so um so yeah you've basically you've just heard our uh episode <laughs> yeah you've reached Hoping- the end of the episode yeah, so, um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this very long episode, hashtag facsimile. Um, it's always great to chat with you, Mike, and, uh, spend, like, spend time with you doing, like, talking about shit that we both love. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Get, so it's, it's been obsessive. a pleasure. Yes. Oh, yes. So mm. once again, for the audience, uh, tell us where they can find as good as it gets and everything else you want to say. <laughs> Yeah, as good as it gets is just searchable on Facebook. Uh, I would go to as good as it gets band, uh, at bandcamp slash bandcamp.com. You can find that. Um, I think the easiest is kind of just check us out on Spotify or iTunes or Google Play or Amazon, whatever, wherever you listen to music. Again, that's as good as it gets. Uh, and for news and updates, I think really the easiest thing is to, to just follow me, uh, on Twitter. So at I am Mike White, uh, and check out our YouTube, uh, search for us as good as it gets at, uh, on YouTube. Sweet. And, uh, I can't wait for the new, uh, EP. Is it, is it an extended play as they call it? It is, it will be an EP. Yes. Okay. Uh, can't wait. Can't Five wait. Songs. Um, 
super super excited for it and uh super proud of you for all the all the work you're putting into that thank to that. you because i know it can't be easy like i it, like that whole world is something that's so out of my uh, uh yeah. out of my mind i can't i can't imagine so congratulations thank and you. uh can't wait to hear it thanks man uh yeah, so that'll do it for episode two eighty six of the Obsessive Viewer. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, next time on the podcast, we are actually going to start a fun uh series of episodes. Um, Fecus and I are doing a Quentin Tarantino retrospective. Um, oh, so not jealous, the, I know <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so next week and then the for the next three weeks, we're going to do. Uh, Quentin Tarantino retrospective episodes, and then we're going to review eventually when it's released uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So uh, look forward to that. And then also check out Anthology, which uh, Tiny just made an appearance on it uh, this week about the uh, wrap-up of the season one of the revival uh, Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. So check that out at anthologypod.com. And also check out Tower Junkies, which is going to have new episodes eventually at some point. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, see you next time. Yep. Thank you, guys. And now, here's a short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. To hear the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. This one is kind of kind of neat. So imagine a world where anytime you watch a movie or TV show, you're mm-hmm. transported to an alternate dimension mm-hmm. <laughs> in which you don't age... And that alternate dimension exists outside of time. So essentially you uh, can watch everything you've ever wanted, but all the time you spend watching it will not affect your time in this dimension. Okay. So you won't age. However, in order for this to work, for whatever reason, every single movie or TV show you watch for the rest of your life will be spoiled for you before you watch it. <laughs> Would you do it? <laughs> um, gosh, that's... Great. And I think, I don't know if you, if you picked this question for me or you really kind of just drew it out of the hat. Cause you know that, uh, one of my, um, most intense anxieties is my lack of time, right? That, yep. that's kind of a, uh, um, you know, this isn't a therapy podcast, but it's a bit, it's a bit of a serious issue for me. I, I, I stress yeah. out about it. I, I, um, I have some issues and some anxieties and some obsessive sure. compulsions about lists mm-hmm. and, you know, am I going to be able to check things off my list? Um, mm-hmm. and so that's a great question. I do love the idea mm-hmm. of being able to, to clear that list. Yeah. Um, the Obsessive Viewer podcast is edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. For a full archive of our episodes, go to ObsessiveViewer.com slash OV archive. You can also like our Facebook page and join the OV Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And follow us on Twitter at Obsessive Viewer and at Obsessive Tiny. And follow our recurring co-hosts at I am Mike White, that's me, at R.A. Fekis and at Burger underscore Lurker. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple Podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do, and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at teepublic.com, T-E-E, public.com. For information about our annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find Anthology, Matt's solo podcast covering the Twilight Zone, 
and other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows at anthologypod.com and on Twitter at OVAnthologyPod. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower series, at TowerJunkiesPod.com and at TowerJunkiesPod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda at TheSecularPerspective.com. The theme music for The Obsessive Viewer comes courtesy of the band Loud Like from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. Additional bumper music is provided courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at facebook.com slash asgoodasitgetsband. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty! Kitty!